Hey guys, it's Ted Bogard. Welcome back to the Ted Show. I don't know if you know, but May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I'm really, really excited and honored to have these two guests on. Dr. Deshaun Chapman is with us and Sarah Hawthorne. Uh, they are board members on part of Dave's House, daveshouse.org. And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to take a deep dive on why it's so important for us to continue to bring awareness to our community that suffers with and from mental health issues. So welcome to you both. How are you today? Thank you. I'm wonderful. Excited, excited to dive into this conversation. Me too. Sarah, you good? I'm good. And just to clarify, I'm a new volunteer with Dave. Oh, volunteer. Yeah. I love a volunteer. <laughs> Dr. Chapman. Volunteers is are good. And Kathy just popped on. Hi, Kathy. Thank you for organizing this and being flexible with my crazy schedule. Um, all right. So uh, before we went live, the audience, I told you the audience absolutely loves when we can learn a little bit about each of you. So I'm going to start with you, Dr. Chapman. Can you tell us a little bit of your background and maybe your journey to get to Dave's house? Okay, yeah. Well, you know, I'm a native here of Central Florida, and I was introduced to Dave's house while I was directing a college and career preparation program for youth and foster care called First Star Central Florida Academy. And working with them and um, supporting them through their mental health journey really um, attracted me to the organization. And then it helped that I had a personal connection. My grandmother, my mom's mother was schizophrenic. And so knowing my mom's journey of what it was like to have a mother who um, suffered with a mental illness for most of her life, really wanted to, um, it just encouraged me to work with this organization to support families who are going through this journey because I know how hard it is for children um, whose parents have a mental illness, but I also know the hope, right? So my grandmother had schizophrenia, um, tough on my mom growing up, but she raised four wonderful, successful children. So I know there's hope at the end of the journey and I wanna help bring that to our residents. I love that. And your background, you're a, you're a PhD? I have an EDD, so I have a doctor. EDD, I love it. Yeah, I've been an educator for 15 years, working in research and programming and teaching in the classroom. So just a lot of interacting with students and families. Love it. All right, thank you. How about you, Sarah? Tell us about your journey. I stand corrected. Uh, Sarah <laughs> is a new volunteer uh, with Dave's House. Uh, we always want to get that straight. So. Sarah, tell us a little bit about you and what you do, kind of your background, and then how you came about uh, to volunteer with Dave's House. Uh, yeah, so I am also a Central Florida native. I have uh, 19 and a half years in um, corporate relocation, multifamily experience. Uh, a good friend of mine um, decided that she wanted to get a real estate license, and she didn't want to do it alone. Um, and so she invited me to do it along with her. Um, and she was very involved in um, mental health awareness and homeless, um, helping those who experience homelessness. Um, unfortunately, she also suffered from a mental illness and passed away um, the day after Christmas, um, four Sorry. years ago leaving behind uh, at the time an 11 year old son. Um, so I stopped the real estate journey um, and later her husband encouraged me to go ahead and do it, um, move forward with it on her honor. Um, so I actually passed the test on her birthday. Congratulations. Um, oh, that's awesome. That gave me <laughs> yeah. chills. I love yeah. that. That was two years ago. And I, um, I knew that when I went into real estate, I wanted to do something that honored her. And so um, I had attended a Dave's house event and uh, several years ago and the testimonials and the way they handle their programs and their housing first model just really blew me away. And honestly, those testimonials still stick with me today. So when I chose um, a organization that I wanted to support, I give 10% of all of my net earnings to Dave's house for every house that I close. Um, you know, I was just really honored that they would allow me to partner with them um, and become involved as a volunteer. Uh, and it's just been fantastic working with this organization. I think Ted's so shocked. Yeah, right, <laughs> a little frozen. <laughs> I'm He's back. I don't know what's going on. Go. That's time of day. Hello, everybody. Here we yeah. go. Um, I guess because it's cloudy out, my Wi-Fi decides not to work somewhere. Probably me. Right. 
That's a that's a beautiful story. It gave me chills when you said you passed on her birthday. That's amazing. All right, let's talk about why we'll get to, we'll we'll get into Dave's house, but I want to talk about the overall mental health awareness uh, month. Yeah. Why is that important? Why do we have? Because there's so many months now. Every everything seems to have a month of its own. Mm-hmm. Why is it important for us to keep to continue to have a month? I think he's frozen again. Deshaun, do you want to start? Yeah, I was going to say, let's just jump right in and answer the question. So I think it's important because awareness. Um, it provides an opportunity for individuals who are not aware of um, folks who have mental health challenges to get a little bit of insight into what their daily life is like, um, to celebrate them, to highlight them, for us to let them know that we care, that we're allies in their journey. And I think that's particularly important always, but right now, because with the pandemic and the economic downturn, we're seeing increasing numbers of individuals who um, are reporting that they're having challenges with mental health. And so I think that you know it's on us, the larger community, to do what we can to support them. Do you think the challenges are be are a result of COVID? Do you think that uh, the increase is a result of COVID, or do you think it's because the awareness part is actually working, and more people are uh, becoming aware of signs and symptoms and uh, options that they have um, in our world? I think it's both. I think that what COVID allowed is for everyone to just slow down a little bit and our way to connect with the outside world was through our phones through social media through tv you know and so i think that that paired with the advocacy it allowed the messages of advocates to come through even stronger because we weren't you know busy running the rat race with our nine to five we were tuned in um, and I think a little bit more compassionate to the struggles of our brothers and sisters in this nation. Amen. So Sarah, tell us about Dave's house. What have you, you're a new volunteer. Volunteering is a big deal. So thank you for that. I, we yeah. all need more volunteers in every organization, including Dave's house. Uh, the more volunteer, you can never have enough quality, compassionate volunteers. Uh, but what about Dave's house? You, you, have, you shared your personal journey, but what does Dave's, Dave's house provide? So Dave's House is a housing first model. Um, so many times, um, you know, people don't get resources because they're not staying in one spot. So getting that support right away and having a stable place to live. Um, one thing I love about Dave's House is that they provide um, many different avenues of care. So they provide the supportive services um, such as counseling. Um, if, if somebody has um, dual issues like an addiction, they can provide support for that. Medical, um, job skills all that. And I will say that volunteering at Dave's house does not feel like work. It feels like fun. You're around some amazing people. Um, you know, we right now we're party planning for the um, Dave's house event in September. And who doesn't love party planning? It's a blast. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but mm-hmm. it's really important work. And um, so you feel good about what you're doing at the end of the day. And again, it doesn't feel like work. Um, so I I love it. Education wise, uh, Dr. Chapman, what uh, what do you see there? Because the education is obviously important, not just because mental health issues, mental health awareness, mental health in general is such a broad stroke term. So many things fall under that. So to educate that, educate everyone on the general mental health can be a Herculean task. Are there specific Mm -hmm. things that Dave's house focuses on from an education standpoint that you've worked with? Yes, I think we are really just realizing our ability to bring the community together around this topic. Individual volunteers such as Sarah who can volunteer with the uh, party planning, who can volunteer to be a mentor. There's a gardening program. There's a clubhouse that has baking and cooking. So there are so many ways to get involved, right? So we are coalescing people at the individual level. 
level, but also at the organization level, bringing together partners really who are all working to support individuals in our community with mental um, health issues. And we're trying to identify barriers and break those down. Um, organizations and the individuals with providers, bringing in advocacy, bringing in resources. So really it is educating, providing opportunity to get connected and then seeing how we can all work together to collectively um, improve outcomes for men and women with serious mental illness. And the, the impact, I think people miss out. It's not just this individual family issue, individual issue. Um, the mental health issues impact jobs and homelessness and impact crime and impact hospitalizations and health care. And there are so many things that happen when we don't educate the people around us and we don't provide the services that are necessary in order for the people who are suffering, who are dealing with it and trying to handle it and trying to live their lives. They need to have the resources so they don't become one of those statistics. Would you all agree? Yes, I would agree 100%. I think, you know, there are 11 million people in the United States who have a serious mental illness. And as you alluded to, and as Sarah alluded to, it's a cycle. Um, you know, people are on the streets, and then they go to a shelter, then they might go to jail, then it might be a hospital where they might have an intervention. But then guess what? It's a cycle. So they might be right back on the street. And that's where Dave's house steps in to chronic homelessness and then first supports them with tradition with transitional housing and then moves into supportive housing. Um, and so we're just so fortunate and excited to carry on this mission and to partner with individuals and organizations who can help us meet the challenge. Absolutely. I, I, I think, agree. Go ahead, Sarah. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, with the housing first model, it's very fiscally responsible for our community yeah. as well. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, someone who doesn't have that housing, they're in a state of chronic crisis care. You know, there is one crisis after the other and the resources aren't being used as effectively as they would be when somebody is um, you know, in a stable environment. I think I've seen statistics, something around like where it's about over $30,000 to the community for yeah. each homeless person. Um, but Dave's house houses, these, if I'm not mistaken, under $11,000 a year. So mm -hmm. that is a huge benefit for our community. Um, and it also um, reduces the drain on um, the emergency crisis care services that we need in our community. That's a great point. I want to point out yeah. the difference there. The emergency services are the ones that you all, most of the audience will probably think of um, when it's cold out and it, the homeless go into a shelter for the evening. That's a Band-Aid. Yes, it's a fix and it's a necessary fix for that moment, for that crisis. But that's a Band-Aid. That's not permanent housing. That's not transition. That's not getting them out of that scenario. All that is allowing is it continue to repeat, as you both referenced. It's a cycle. It's a cycle of crisis. And when all you think about, it, if you've ever had to worry about not having a roof over your head, Imagine trying to do that and trying to get well and trying to get the services you need and you have no transportation and maybe right. you don't even have any ID. I mean, the, the, it just the amount of impact that you can have if you take uh, the people who are suffering with this or trying to figure out a solution and get them into some sort of permanent solution mm -hmm. um, based organization like Dave's house is it makes a world of difference. It really does. And I think that's what's so special about Dave's House is that for years we've done the permanent support of housing so well. And now we are envisioning how we can partner with others to create this hub where we meet people where they are, when they are homeless, when they are going through transition and support them through that process all the way to permanent support of housing. All right, so we, uh, Lori Trainer posted the 91821 event, I'm assuming. So I put that up there. Thank you, Lori, for that. And we will share that. That's the one that Sarah was talking about the, part, the planning. We got to plan. Yes, it'll be so much fun. You guys have to come out. <laughs> we will absolutely come out. We'll do some promo shows for that too. All right, what's the best way for someone to get involved? Sarah, you're a new volunteer. So if somebody's watching, and they're like, all right, I would like to find out more about what I can do to help. What's the best way for them to do that? 
Uh, they should email info at daveshouse.org and um, they, uh, the staff on site can get them connected with the right volunteer opportunities at whatever level you're willing to offer, whether it's um, a weekend, a, a year that you want to come out and do some of the um, projects that they have on site, or if you want to be um, a regular volunteer with one of the committees or get involved with the board, uh, they will get you in the right place. Um, they're amazing at respecting your time uh, and your resources and are appreciative of whatever you can offer. And Dr. Chapman, you know, as a as an EDD, I'm sure you get asked to be on a lot of boards. Why why Dave South? Being on a board is a very big deal, mm -hmm. and it's a commitment. And I serve on many, and I understand how important it is. The board the board can play a pivotal role. Uh, but why why this particular organization for you? Sarah shared her story. Yeah, Your grandmother. It was it was an opportunity to learn something new. So for me, you know, I've been on boards for education, right? So there's that professional connection. And I think for Dave's house, um, I shared the story of my grandmother earlier. It was that personal and professional connection that really drew me into the organization and the people. As Sarah mentioned, you know, it's a really kind people, um, great environment, really wanted to dig into the mission and just do our best for the clients. And there's so many ways to plug in and to be involved, no matter the level of resources that you're able to give. So it's that personal connection for me. Love it. All right. So guys, listen, if you, um, Kathy's posting probably something I was just going to say, but I'm going to go ahead and post hers while I say it. If you feel like you need services, if you have a family member, a friend, a loved one that does, if your heart is in this for volunteering or giving back, there are many ways. Money's great. I'll say it. Money's great, but a lot of people hesitate on the money side. Get involved. Get educated. Volunteer. Mm -hmm. They need man and woman power. They need, um, they need supplies. There are so yeah. many ways for you to give back. Uh, but we want you to be able to access the services and get people you love into the services uh, mm -hmm. if it is the right fit. Thank you, Dr. Deshaun Chapman and Sarah Hawthorne. And of course, of course, Kathy Pearson and Ellen O'Connor for all you guys do. Daveshouse.org is an amazing organization. Get involved right in our backyard here, people. Uh, thank you both for being on the show and sharing your journeys. That was awesome. Thank, thank you, Ted. for having me. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Go to daveshouse.org and reach out. Get involved. They need you. We all need to get involved.